three, two, one, go. Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us under the library, our homebrew live play Call of Cthulhu show. Before we get going tonight, if you would like to play a Call of Cthulhu module set in the world in which we are playing with characters from season one of this here show, head over to Drive Through RPG and look up A Snake's Oil, our module written by our very own keeper. And if you'd like to support what we do here on the show, please do so. You can do that at patreon.com slash under the library. With that, let's get going. Uh, my name is Arthur. I'm playing Franny, and I am joined by a full cast of investigators tonight. Chris is Boone. Emily is playing Joe. Scott's Cully. Rick is Bello. Wayne is Rutherford. And as always, our incredible keeper is Michael. Michael, take it away. Hey, thanks for joining us. Under the Library is a Call of Cthulhu tabletop RPG, and I am in my lucky new Pineapple Keeper hat, in case you're only listening to us and can't see it. Uh, this is the disclaimer part, and I could go into all the details of the goriness, but essentially, if you're comfortable watching Silence of the Lambs while roasting marshmallows in your finest furry suit, you'll feel perfectly at home with us. And with that, I'll send it over to Emily for last week's recap. Well oh boy. Done. Okay. So, as we began last week, Franny and Rutherford were looking at the blueprints from the backs of the pictures in Richard's house. Rutherford memorizes everything, and Franny makes some rough emphasis on rough drawings of the blueprints to send along with whoever is entering. At the same time, outside, Joe shares some stories from her past with Cully, swears him to secrecy, but he wants to talk to Boone and thinks he can be trusted. So Joe does also share her story with Boone, who knows a few things about her hometown, uh, including there was a hallucinogenic drug that was popular there and also a string of murders. And uh, those murders may have to do with Joe's tragic story. Joe passes Boone her book, and he sees a vision which is actually from inside of Joe's house. He's overwhelmed by the feeling of death in the room and drops the book. Boone, Joe, and Cully decide that it's possible that Richard might actually know Hans, Hans Becker, the man from whom Joe stole this book. And it might be important to speak to him to better understand the journal. So we decide it is really important to find Richard and go back to Rutherford and Franny to work together. However, without sharing any of Joe's private information, they will pretend that everything is fine. At the same time, Bello offers some mama munchies, wood oven baked tater tots to the three returning to the house who are all pretending everything is fine. <laughs> and Bello offers to help the plan by distracting as he goes into his appointment. He will make a cluck motion. Joe will help. Franny asks Boone about his experience taking a train into town because she realized looking at the blueprints that there was a train that actually ran in and out of the building of interest. Um, Boone shares that the front five cars were very modern and the rear cars were very beaten down and old. And there were no, there was no access. So Boone actually had to ride in on the top. There were sounds from the front that were unidentifiable, not mechanical, but who knows what they were. He jumped off early and he hides from Franny and Rutherford, but shares with Joe and Cully that he felt uncomfortable at this point, that there might be something supernatural happening. So Franny Rutherford and Cully head out in Richard's car. Joe and Boone go with Bello in the chicken truck. They pass a guard and enter the facility uh, as Franny Rutherford and Cully are driving through town. 
Cully sees a disheveled Richard walking down the street. Cully speaks to him, but it is clear that he is not himself. He does not have his usual accent. He's confused. He knows his name, but perhaps not much else. And that's where we ended. That's my cue. I'm on. All right. Nailed it. Uh, so with that, we jump right in. Who wants to go first? Are we going to crotch tots or are we going to poor Richard? I just realized that we left the house to rescue Richard and we now might have more people to rescue from the I same just place. The same thing. I'm like, I'm like <laughs> enjoy the crotch tots and the greasy chicken with the, uh, <laughs> the army. Um, I, I say we left off with Richard. You, you, I mean, that's a good cliffhanger. To yeah, out. we need to yeah. start with Richard. All right. That's you, Culligan. Okay. Uh, Richard, I'm back. I'm back. Richard, where were you? What What happened? Uh, uh, Do you remember being taken last night? Uh, um, and as, as he's sort of trying to think, I'm like, Rutherford, Rutherford, come here. Franny. So we were driving, if I'm not mistaken, and we saw Rutherford. Yeah, I think you had screeched to a halt uh, on the side of the road. And I sprinted out of the car, and and you guys were following behind me. Yeah, Rutherford would have gotten out. Okay, you know, Rutherford would definitely be uh, quickly there to to, to see his friend, uh, to see his friend Richard. And then he. And as soon as you show up, I'm going to say, Rutherford, he he doesn't remember anything. He he can't seem to remember his name too well. He seems to be having trouble remembering me. He doesn't seem to remember being taken last night. Huh. Well, and Rutherford, so, yeah. as you as you run up, you realize um, the the dark stain running down Richard's pants leg. He's completely like wet himself. Ah, and uh, I was like, I said Richard, uh, and I I use his last name as well, so I say his, his full name, and I want to see what his reaction in his face is like. Is is he just seem to be a little uh, bit of he, he he squints and he looks at you and um you can tell he's kind of agitated even a little frustrated okay and one of the first things i think of you know with uh, egghead scientific mind is i i look around his head to see if there's any marks like who knows from electrodes or things like that quick surveillance of uh just uh his extremities anything anything he had that i could see his hands and stuff looking for bruises burns marks and such like that yeah, give me a give me a medicine roll, or do, do you have medicine? Uh, or nope. Should... Okay, just do a spot hidden then. That's fine. Yeah, spot hidden is definitely better. All right. Oh my! My cat was playing with my dice. Let's see. Okay, let's get the right ones. Oh wow, a six. Nice. Okay. And, yeah. Um, so you're you're watching his eyes really closely um the surface of his skin seems fine except for kind of bruising on his arms where um you know he was possibly from being pushed into the car uh what really catches your attention though is right uh in the corner of his left eye there seem to be some broken capillaries and um some redness in the uh, tissue in the corner of his eye uh, is that a, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Considering uh, my medicine is a one, I wouldn't have any idea in the medicine world, but hmm. I'm trying to put it together with the redness of the eye and maybe some sort of contraption that perhaps was used that may have caused that. Was his eye forced open? Was Did he have an injection in his eye? Something of that nature. Uh, R- Rutherford, uh, don't, don't you think we ought to get um, Richard here off the street and maybe back to his home? Uh, I, uh, I don't know so if we want him seen uh, quite like this. But Franny, oh, yeah, Franny would... Rutherford, what's wrong with him? I, I, we don't know, uh, Cully, but uh, why, why don't we get him somewhere where we can actually, uh, you know, maybe get him some water and uh, see if we can try try and help yeah. him a little bit. Yeah, I'm. I'm, 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 I'm would, quite, you, would you like to go home, I'm Richard? Thirst. I'm I'm thirsty. Okay, yes. uh, uh, let's get uh, you wait, home, honey. To... Try to see if he recognizes, because that's the, the car we're in is his car, mm-hmm. right? If I'm not mistaken, yeah. so he makes I, no mention of it whatsoever. 
Okay. I just was kind of curious if he recognized it. And I said, we, let's, R Richard, we, come over to your car and uh, accentuate it that way, see if he has any reaction. Apparently not. And oh, we open the back oh, door. Oh. I'm going to take him. So I'm going to take Richard sort of by the arm, like to sort of guide him and walk him over to the car. Cause I'm assuming he's yeah. not walking on his own. Okay. Uh, he walks, he's just, uh, he, not, um, he doesn't like shuffle along, but he, he can walk with you. Uh, he's just, he seems more confused, not like physically incapable. Got it. Okay. I'm going to do a quick look around the street and see if anyone's looking, uh, if anyone's uh, taking uh... notice. Yeah, uh, you can give a spot hidden on that. Okay. Uh, I think that is a failure. Uh, just, hidden. just, to, just. To, uh... Yeah, no, it's a failure. Um, so you you look up above. Um, uh, you're, you're looking around. You're kind of scanning the streets, and. Uh, you you lock eyes with a gentleman down the street sitting on what appears to be a, a, a like a bus stop bench but obviously mm -hmm. not and um he's kind of furiously scribbling as he's looking at you hmm okay uh, so I assume that Cully and Richard are ahead of Rutherford and myself is that the way you guys have yeah it. i'm walking as soon as you say get him home because mm -hmm. that's where he's going to be safe i'm just beelining it to the car and I, like i said i've sort of got him arm and arm and i'm almost dragging him behind me okay <clears throat> and i'm going to sort of uh, you know quietly and surreptitiously say rutherford there, there's a man there uh, down the street sitting at a bench watching us and, and taking notes uh, how far how far down the road is he uh keeper uh like 200 feet oh not that far all right. Uh, so uh, Rutherford would look over, and I and I would he would directly point. Rutherford points at him. He says, "That man right there, the one looking at us oh, and writing." Stop that, Rutherford! Stop and that. Rutherford just and I, Rutherford I like just, I, I grab him by the shoulder and sort of turn him back to to push him toward the car. Okay, Rutherford starts that way, and uh, what what's the reaction of the man on the bench? He keeps scribbling on his uh, pad of paper. He's really doing the you know New York Times crossword puzzle. Which is really funny. And uh, <laughs> uh, Rutherford, uh, Rutherford looks at Franny and says, "No, this, this is important." And uh, and and shakes free and tries to shake free. I'll say I should say that tries to shake free of Franny and just does a what what Rutherford would do, kind of a uh, um, a direct egghead. He's got tunnel vision and he just directly starts walking towards the fellow on the bench scribbling. Are, are the you know, keys in the car? Uh, yeah, he probably, I, yeah, Rutherford would have left the keys in the ignition, I'm okay. guessing. Probably running. Yeah, why not? Okay. Franny's going to hop in the driver's timing, seat. Yeah, from a timing perspective, when we get to the car, I'm just going to get Richard into the back seat, make sure he's sort of settled in. Okay, and he keeps, he's very, like, at, he, I, I, I want to go, I I'm, I'm, would really like to go home. I'd like to go to bed now. I'm I'm, I'm very tired. I, could we go to? I, yeah, we're going. We're, we just have to wait for Rutherford. Okay. Franny, right. where did Rutherford go? We got to go. Yeah. Uh, so while he's making his way toward that dude, I'm going to very calmly turn the car in the direction of the guy, thinking that, you know, if anything happens, Rutherford can just jump in the passenger seat and we take off. Sure. Nice. Okay. Uh, and, and Rutherford just calls out, excuse, excuse, excuse me, sir. Ex, ex, excuse me, sir. And uh, if he's, you know, see if he's still looking that way. If, uh, if he was looking through him, maybe he was doing a sketch of a building down the road or something like that. Kind of uh, trying to figure out his. Uh... Uh, he, he looks up at you and, and he points at himself. Interesting. <laughs> and says, are, are, "Are you? Are you? Can you talk, my friend?" Me? Y yeah. Are you? Are you? Are, are you talking to me? Y y yes, my friend. Uh, obviously, you can. What? Oh. Why? What are you scribbling? And you've seen our friend here in distress. 
are you doing are you writing something or doing something about us what's your interest i i uh, i i guess i don't under i'm an artist and i'm i'm just sketching the street scene in front of me god damn it <laughs> and i said oh uh, that that's fascinating and then i i just lean over and i look at his uh what he was sketching oh i didn't realize you were that close to him sorry uh, oh okay uh, yeah um uh, and yeah, you look down and there in front of you, it's not a, the, the, the scene he sketched, it's a sketch, right? Um, a very kind of rushed drawing, um, everybody in broad pencil strokes, uh, the car that you're in and Richard standing there as y'all seem to approach him. Uh, it's not in tremendous detail, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like looking at it, you, you realize what the scene is. So as if, if he's an artist, does he look um, disheveled, like he needs money, or is it, does, is he uh, like well kept or you know kept or such like that? He, he's in regular kind of casual clothes for the time. As you as you look him over, he's youngish, probably in his twenties, and there's nothing about him that stands out as too worn or too you know uh, or or too new either. He's just kind of in average clothes, looking like an your average guy on the street. Okay. So it's, uh, when I see them standing there and this has taken more than 18 or like 10 seconds, I'm going to just cut my hands and go, Rutherford, we have to go. Come on. And then, uh, so Rutherford, do you whisper on. it like that or do you? Oh, yell no, no, no. I just yelling. didn't want to blast the mic. <laughs> Appreciate it. So, so Rutherford would uh, hold his hand. And he goes, well, one moment, my friend. And he doesn't use your name. Rutherford doesn't want to use your name or anything with this fellow because he doesn't know what's up. But he uh, turns to him and he says, if you're an artist, you're very observant. And if you're very observant, you, you would have seen our friend. What direction did our friend who we just uh, brought to the car come from? And I'll try to be a little more. I'll try to use my persuade. Yeah. Let's see what your persuasion is here. I have a particularly good persuade. So I use... Uh, complimentary words to him and i said you know i said with your wonderful what are these compliments come on you, you gotta work your keeper oh i rolled a five yeah and... well let me hear these beautiful words tell me oh man i said uh with I the said, luscious glow of my skin did you say you've got to work your keeper yes that is exactly what he said that, i'm sorry but that that's a whole new level of of awfulness in this game <laughs> if that's true that's a different that kind of, of rp <laughs> working the keeper under the library not not good <laughs> um, so I, I say to him uh, i said i said oh, with, i said you're sketching this the street scene and you're seeing everything going on around you're incredibly observant and i point out a few details in the picture you know i said with this and such and i said and you seem to have included, even included a uh, people walking by and the action of their their movements and bodies and and our, our friend it's a bit uh, a bit future you know, of a futuristic representation with movement in it it's, it's a fantastic fantastic image you, you have a lot of talent and I, I just have to ask you what what did what do you see what did you see all around you just moments ago that you brought into your your picture and our friend he's he's obviously in here yeah, and uh, your your words work. He blushes a little. I, I uh, thank you. I've I've been working on my craft for some time, and he he flips back in his notebook a couple of pages, and he shows you a uh, very same style of drawing. He's able to kind of do these very quickly, um, and you recognize the car that you saw the other night uh, pushing a man out into the street basically in, in front of the theater there. And uh, th this is the scene that he sketched out. Is this, is this event happening? It's very clearly uh, Richard being pushed out uh, onto the, onto the sidewalk. And I was like, I, these, that's a fantastic drawing. And obviously I'm guessing you do more d detailed drawings too. Like for instance, the, uh, people around that car and like you know driving it and such like that look at you you have s good d details on our friend i could almost tell it's him these other people you, can i see uh, do you have any other more detailed drawings of them it would be fascinating to see them uh, i 
I, I, this was, uh, this was about the time I sat down and these are, I, I tend to draw quickly as you can see, so that I can get lots of my drawings out. I'm, I'm working a lot on my style. I, I don't have more, but I, I'd happily, if you're interested in this drawing, I'd be more than happy to sell it to you. Uh, consider it, consider it sold my friend. Actually, I'll, if these are books, uh, if this is a book from the uh, evening, just um, how many evenings ago did Richard disappear? It was last night. Oh, it? yeah, just last, last night. night. But this, the drawing's not from the drawing's not from last night. It's from you know, like another, conceivably another. like ten minutes ago. Oh, okay. And I said, uh, can I pur purchase uh, the whole book from you? And I pull out. Uh, Rutherford has money on him, um, so he pulls out some some money and offers some. A good twenty dollars. Why not? And uh, back then, that's uh, actually a lot yeah. of money, right? Yeah. yeah. He he looks at you, and he's his eyes kind of like fly open uh, for a second. Let me make a quick little roll here. And uh, he he uh, he then looks back at you, and he goes twenty five. And I said, absolutely. And with the, the twenty-five, oh, could you okay. could you sign could you sign the back and give us uh, an address and number so we can we can uh, come and maybe look at more of your work. Oh, or I can I can come and look at more of your work. Absolutely. I mean, if you're interested in uh, maybe supporting me uh, more often, then I would uh, love to have a patron. I, I, here's my Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I say it's it, this. This is this is a, a wonderful m meeting we had today. Unfortunate circumstances finding our friend on the streets, but I think this is a there's a, something wrapped into this meeting. You is, is special, and we'll come. I I will definitely come calling and bring some of my other friends who are interested in the, the, the field of art uh, to see what you have to offer. And so I I pull out the money because uh, once again Rutherford has has a wallet wallet with some money in it and offers it to him and uh offers to shake his hand okay. and he 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 enthusiastically pushes his binder at you uh takes the money from you and uh, uh says I, I i look forward to hearing from you mr rutherford right yes and and your name i asked him to uh, sign it was... oh yes uh it's it's right here on the back you can see it. I'm Willard Palmer. That's right. M Mr. Palmer, it, it's uh, a pleasure to meet you. Our, our friend is in a bit of distress, and I, I need to get back to him and re return him for some well-needed rest. But it, it's been wonderful to, to meet you, my friend, and I look forward to settling down this evening and, and looking through your your sketches. They, they're absolutely it, wonderful. And full are we hearing this? Just wondering, are we hearing this exchange from the car, or are we too far away? It's uh, it's possible that you would hear it, um, and yeah, it's possible. Sure. Cool. Okay. So as soon as I hear that, I say, "Ask him if he goes by Willie." Oh God! <laughs> I'm not. I'm not getting it. Willie Palmer. Uh, I, still, and he still looks, don't know. Oh. He, he, he looks wow. over at not you good. and he says, absolutely not. I am an artist by name and Willard is my name. I'm going places, Mr. Rutherford. You've helped to give me a big start. And I promise you that that purchase is going to be a big investment. And this, I look forward to seeing you at this place that you make it to. And I just I look outside. Do, do, do you do any l l landscapes, perhaps? Oh, like, all right, I, Rutherford. We, got, we need to get Richard home. I, I'm glad you made your date. Now, come on, let's go. Okay, and well, just just one moment, Franny, and I lean over to Willard. And I said, "Do you do any sketches of landscapes, perhaps even of oh that large f facility that's just outside of town?" Oh, uh, you you'll be quite pleased to see it. It's uh, in the sketchbook that you just purchased. Ah, uh, that that is, that is fantastic. A anything of that nature in landscapes and around the town, I'll be hi highly interested in seeing. I'll be happy to do more for you. Um. Thank you. I would look forward to anything you can do over the next few days of the of the facility. Oh, I'll, I'll, are you commissioning me? Absolutely. If you can do uh, some 
lively pictures with comings and goings of trains and at certain times of days, you know how the sunsets make certain things come alight and the morning light is so different. And if you could do that, I'd be fascinating to see the play of light on the landscape, but specifically the facility and, and just the action that is uh, enlivens it. Um, and, and if you could, please note that, you know, the time of day, just so we can, I could reference it and understand more of where you're coming from. Oh, you're a train man. I get it. I get it. I'll, uh... well, a bit of a train, a train spotter. So yes, yeah, so if you can make some detailed notations on, on that aspect, that, that would be oh, wonderful. It's a bit of a, a curious topic for most people. I, I like some of these strange things. Oh, I'll be sure. I'll get you lots of good train images. Absolutely. I, 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 I thank you, Willard, Willard Palmer. It, it's it's been a pleasure. And, and uh, he he turns off uh, with a bit of a skip in his step uh, as you see him kind of putting the money in his pocket, and he is definitely excited. And, and as he's going away, I go bye, Willie. <laughs> and he 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 turns and he waves excitedly. Uh, so yeah, so R Rutherford heads back to the the the, the car and uh, and quickly settles in for Franny's driving, and he's happy to hop into the and whatever. With, as soon as you get in the car, I say, guys, I I have a question. We've got to get Richard home, but aren't they doing a distraction or something? What are we going to do about the other guys? Oh, we'll figure that out in a minute. Uh, we we just need to get Richard home first, uh, and, and they'll be fine. Like the the goal of our operation was to get our friend Richard back. That's mm -hmm. that's been successful. So if our friends, I'm I'm, I'm Richard. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm Richard yes, you are, I dear. Want, I, I want to go home. We'll I'm, get you some I'm water and, and get you to bed. I'm tired. Let's go, I, Franny. Hit the gas. Thirsty. Yeah, oh, I'm already gone. Very, as soon, as, soon as he closes, like even as he was closing the door, I'm out. Uh, so, uh, Michael, we're gonna we're just gonna head back home. If you want to flip over to these guys, I'm dying to hear right. how this goes. Yeah, I mean, what could go wrong? It's going to be great. It's going to be like Stranger Things and Creatures and one of you gets eaten. Remember that train that was on the tracks? Let's see what happens. I think chicken's <laughs> the tastiest. It's true. Anyone? Yeah, that would be you three. Cue the well, people. Well, Bello, what, what you, you have doing, to go Rick? to your meeting. Uh, well, I guess I could handle the distraction. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose we could do that. Uh, 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 what would what, you have in mind there, Joe Bonds? Well, I don't know. What do you have in your kitchen here? Anything? <laughs> I, I got a full and loaded chicken. Uh, so let me uh, let me uh, show you. So like I, 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 cooking I, fuel? I pull out. Oh, a bunch of things. Yes. Uh, I have a pot here. And uh, if you want, we could do a live fry demonstration. And then... Uh, uh, Maybe by accident, some of the ice gets in and causes a bit of a commotion. Jesus. And, uh, <laughs> you know, potentially a large fire. That would be not good. Uh, so, so. That would be uh, a distraction. So, how can I help? I'm very good at sneaking. Or, 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 or we go with a, a more sane uh, humanitarian approach. <laughs> Uh, where we just offer free chicken and uh, ideally uh, accrue a large gathering uh, uh, that will pull from across the campus. Well, let's try that, but maybe as a backup, just in case everybody doesn't go for your chicken. Right. I could start a little bit of a ruckus on the other end of the building. As a backup, we can burn the place down. <laughs> Or, well, or, or, Rick, would Bello have any jars of flour? And a couple of tin pans. Uh, he would. He could make a flour bomb. <laughs> I hear those are highly effective. They are. I, it, it dates back to 1893, the origin of the flour bomb. It does. Uh, to be I fair, part of the facility is still under construction. <laughs> So we wouldn't have to injure. I would never want to it injure a hit. person. It just hit. Yeah, oh, right. okay. it took that long uh, for you to get that. Oh, really? You didn't. Wow. Oh, wow. No. That's yeah. good. That's a good one. You, were, uh, you trying yeah, to so, were you trying to block that out? 
I was like, wow, flower bomb. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't I think of that. Fascinating <laughs> idea. Uh, at first, I was like, does he want me to make dumplings or something <laughs> odd? I don't uh, So I... <laughs> Uh, sure, sure. Uh, so we we can handle that, Joe Bonds. That'll be a great uh, backup. Um, I think I think uh, uh, let me uh, let me meet uh, get to this meeting. But we can. Uh, I'll show you here, and I'll pull down sort of a, a, a the, 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 the the hat. There's a hatch. I'm just gonna like right here. Sure. Right. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Right behind and the neck of the chicken. Right yeah. behind the neck of the chicken. And you can There's a there's a a, a mic up there, so you can. Uh, you can speak into it and the chicken's mouth drops down and it's, you can just, we can, we can do a chicken call and get all the folks here for uh, uh, morsels. Okay. So, and I'll, you, maybe oh, you, boom. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was, I was hiding in the corner here. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, uh, so yeah, if, if people come out and you want to feed a bunch of people, I can help dispense the, uh, the chicken. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. Does the I side think. open up? And they, they do, and I'll, I'll crank the side of the wing. Oh, oh, great. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'll put on that, one of them chef's aprons, and, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I can help uh, help feed the masses. Wonderful, and I'll, and I'll attach this little bit of a shelving system there, so I'll set that in so that you can rest things and cook on the other side. It's wonderful, wonderful. So uh, I, I, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll head in uh, to my meeting with the colonel no absolutely not i like where you're going there but... <laughs> i'm gullible i'm bad i make stupid keeper decisions but i'm not falling for that one thanks all right all right can i make some sort of maybe an intelligence role to see if I know which part of the facility is still under construction? Well, Joe, so far, everything that you've told me is that you're, you're the most intelligent one in the group. So <laughs> I'm just wondering if I can roll on that. Um, yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Uh, that is a hard success on knowing which part of the facility is still under construction. Yeah, so it's uh, pretty obvious then as y'all pulled into the parking lot, you can see the kind of plastic flapping in the breeze, and uh, that's probably anachronistic, but oh well, and uh, you can- Canvas? You can see sure, canvas, that's probably better. See, I told you you're the smartest one in the group. Um, and I just feel like you're making a big hole for me to fall into when you say that things like that. It is a construction site. Never. Um, all right. And uh, so anyway, you see kind of the frames going up and uh, it's pretty obvious. Okay, great. And and at this point, Keeper, I guess, uh, you know, uh, at, the, at, the, at the beginning of last episode, I had, uh, I had a, made a hard success on detecting uh, uh, Joe Bonds uh, if something was off with her, trying to convince her to share her back or her her misgivings that, I think that was two episodes ago i think it was that just, was the it yeah. was the end of two episodes this is a long this is a long call back uh but i guess my my, my mind has just been has she acted uh does she seem okay put together uh, everything's else? fine <laughs> <laughs> oh. even yeah. from across the city you can hear cully's heart breaking just a little bit for his friend uh-huh <laughs> Uh, you yeah, your your deep psychological chicken intellect would help you if she was a fine feathered friend. But however, uh, Joe seems totally in control. Okay, all right, fair enough. Uh, so I guess at that juncture, if we're where we need to be, uh, put the con park and I'll venture in. Okay, and. Uh, <laughs> We hey. call 12 Top Gun graduates. Yep. What, what, what is that? Oh, what was Yay. that? <laughs> so, as you walk into the building, we're not going to we explain to that. <laughs> that was not me. I don't have to explain anything, but the look on Rick's face definitely <laughs> says it was Rick. <laughs> No, it was not me. It was not. I think Rutherford uh, was the culprit there. Uh, oh, we'll just say that was the back channeling of the uh, military folk uh, in the building. But, wow. uh, we can go on. Weird. Okay. Uh, well, 
or okay so as you walk into the building it, it it's odd that the you know it's pretty well guarded on the outside uh it's not very full on the inside and it, as you walk in there's really nobody to greet you uh there are signs up in the hall that says uh that points you in the direction of the cafeteria and um, you're thinking that this is probably a fairly mixed civilian military area yeah. uh, that you're in. And uh, you make your way, um, I, I would assume, unless you wanted, uh, there, uh, there's, there's an arrow that points straight ahead towards the cafeteria and an arrow that points to the right that says offices. Hmm. Fascinating. Well, uh, uh, did I have a name in particular of the individual I was looking for here? That was a. Uh, yes, it's uh, Paula Bradford. Paula Bradford. Uh, so I'll, I'll hook a right, uh, walking confidently. Okay. Towards and the offices. Towards the offices. Towards the offices. And so uh, you don't get too far down the hall and you start to see names on the doors and uh, but the second or third one down is uh, Paula Bradford's office. And the other offices, are they occupied? Uh, as you kind of go by, you can hear people talking from inside. And do I pick up anything if I'm just slow moseying down this hallway? I'll make a listen roll. That's what I wanted to hear. Uh, oh, ha, oh, ha, oh, ha. Uh, let's see. That's a, mm, that's a 59. I got a listen of 50. I'm going to, I'm going to burn down luck and see if I can hear something juicy. All right. Okay. Did you burn that? You burn that luck? All yeah, right. I did. Yep. All right. And so <laughs> as you're leaning in, you, you hear a, uh, a, a very, uh, gruff uh voice saying oh yeah sam i i think your uh your payment's gonna go a long way to uh securing wagoneer farms uh beef supply to our our military deposit here i uh, i really appreciate that gift and uh, you always remember the wife's name and you give cheryl a good hello for me will you uh and at this point i'll i'll just be walking into the room Walking in to that, that you were listening into somebody's office. Oh, I thought that was Paula Bradford's. No, uh, no, no, no. Then I'll do this. I'll knock on the door. And who, okay. who's, that, whose office's name is it? Uh, uh, um, that is Stan Lindsay. Stan Lindsay. And what was the name of the uh, beef, beef connoisseur? Uh, it was Wagoneer Farms. Wagoneer Farms. Yeah, but it was Sam. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Rack attack tat. Okay. Uh, yeah, come in. And I open the door. Hi there. I'm uh, I'm Bella Poulet, and I am just looking for Paula Brown. Oh my lord, Sam, Sam of of the wet. How are you doing? And what? Why, boy? Last time I saw you, we had that uh, E. coli outbreak. Did you get that all taken care of? Because my lord, I know that put a hurting on that whole town there over in Laredo. Uh, I I think you've got me confused. I'm Stan. Are you looking for Sam? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh uh, no, no! Did I say Sam? It's my Louisiana draw. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, uh Stan. How are you doing there? <laughs> what did you just switch to, Adam Sandler voice? <laughs> and, and, and Bello still got his arm in a sling and his wings down around his his ankles oh my gosh okay anyway he says we uh, forgot to pretty you up before you went in uh well yeah i am stan but uh uh I, what did you say your name was again oh bello poulet i think we met at the uh the the, the meat turners conference uh back in kansas uh, city i think a couple years ago uh back in uh, uh 30 37. Can you make a persuade roll on these? I'm kind of <laughs> loving it, but I, I think you got to. <laughs> uh, I got regular success. All right. Keep going. Sugar oh, lips. 
Okay, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And uh, and uh, how's your how's your your uh, wife? Uh, and, and you had a you had a, 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 a couple of kids. Is that right there, Stan? Oh yeah, of course, little Stan and little Stan the third. Absolutely. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Stan That's and right. Stan. That's right. <laughs> what about, what, oh boy, how are they doing? They doing all right? This guy's oh. like George Foreman. <laughs> Yeah, they're uh, they're uh, Stan's playing football, and 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 Stan three, he's uh, he's playing baseball. Oh, that's wonderful! And I'm sure I'm sure in your line of work, there's no problem getting another another piece of leather there should he uh, he he need it for his uh, football career. That is just fantastic. Well, uh, I I don't want to keep it. What what are you doing here, Stan? I'm just surprised to see you here on these campuses. No, I'm uh, <laughs> I help with the uh, sourcing of our uh, food supplies. <laughs> What uh, what brings you into the building today? Oh, matter of fact, myself as well. You see, I've got uh, I've got my my wonderful product uh, of the all stricken chicken uh, of Bella Poulet. Oh, well, Mister Poulet, uh, let me ask you something. Um, <clears throat> do you need a a slightly used car? <laughs> do I? Have, That's uh, a really weird question. This is I. I admittedly am a little thrown off, Stan. I mean, that is just a wonderfully kind gesture, but it seems a little bit out of left field. Well, I've got, let me tell you, I've got one for sale. And um, let me just say, it's a it's a beaut. Uh, she runs really well. And uh, I've, I've just been working on this side project, uh, selling a couple of used cars. And I thought maybe, you know, a man in your line of work might need an extra automobile. Do you need to make an intelligence roll? Oh, I see what he's oh, laying down. Oh, I see what you're laying down. You, yeah, yeah, I see. I'm uh, hoping Bellow's a little bit smarter than Rick. Bellow is not very smart, but uh, I, 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 I see. I see, sir. Yes, uh, I would love to uh, purchase the car, or, or better yet. Uh, you know, a uh, little little stay in the third, I'm sure may need uh, funds for his little league team, and I'd be more than obliged to make a contribution to it. Oh, I love it. The the Bello Poulet Fields of Los Alamos. I love it. I yeah, think that'd be right. great. That's yeah. right. All the little chickens running around swinging their Maybe a scholarship so for stand three. Yeah, a scholarship. Just a very, very mild, modest scholarship. Yeah, uh, that sounds wonderful. Wonderful. What what sort of numbers are we talking about here? I'd have to talk to the accounting department, of course, but I think we would be more than happy to make any type of donation of that sort. Oh, well, uh, you you seem like a, a generous man. And, I, I you know, I think that uh, it's going to take a while to get the necessary permits going and stuff, but... Uh, a uh, hundred dollars would probably uh, at least get the uh, the things in the works. And there's like a large, large, large gulp, like I'm swallowing a whole egg. And I go, yes, yes. <laughs> um, I as, think as, that's you're, doable. as you're standing there talking to him and narrating along, um, you hear a siren go off in the background. Uh, and uh, where where are you actually, Boone? Oh, I'm still in the uh, chicken mobile. Okay, and what the can side you, what is can, open? I'm getting yeah. ready to. So, dispense, what can you uh, see from? Are you facing the building? Is that the, are you? Uh, yeah, I assume I'm in the parking lot facing the building. So that when all right, and out. you see a pretty good um, billowing of black smoke oh, coming shit. up from the construction site. Oh my goodness! Did I hear an explosion or just? And if you're listening along, you see a pretty big smile from Emily in the middle of the screen. No, what? <laughs> <laughs> ah, she found the jar of flour. Oh my God, uh, Joe, are you a are you a fan of smoke? You seem pretty uh, pretty oh, happy there. Joe's not. Oh, Joe's not with you yet. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. You just, was... you just see the smoke, <laughs> and um, it, it's almost like there was a secret communication between the player <laughs> and the keeper that I was not privy to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh my God! What? What? Uh, 
what on earth happened to Joe? She was here a moment ago, and now I'm here by myself. Oh, All right, well. and, and, and the sirens going off are pretty loud for you because you're outdoors, and now you're you're starting to see vehicles approach from uh, from different parts of the campus. Uh, these are military vehicles and um, fire trucks are starting to roll in. Uh, it's mm -hmm. quite a, quite quite a chaotic scene uh, moving into um, from where you're standing. We'll just call it the right hand side of the building towards the back where you can see the canvas is flapping in the way. Oh, my Lord, this is not going to be good for Mr. Bellows business. Well, it's going to be great for it. Everyone's going to have to evacuate. They're all going to be standing in front of the chicken truck. Get the chicken no, cooking quick. With Can I roll yeah. to see if I'm <laughs> smart enough to put the conversation Joe and Bello were having about? Yeah, her, go for it. You know, I, together, so I can. I think you're pretty savvy, though. Connect the dots. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because about that time, right? Um, you see Joe. Um, Joe kind of jumps in the front of the chicken mobile. And she's out of breath, right? Um, <laughs> she's obviously kind of made it uh, back to you. She was hoofing it to get to you before um, the all the kind of army vehicles and fire truck raced up. So she's out of breath. She's huffing and puffing. And uh, it just kind of dawns on you. Yeah. What sort of mischief did you get up to, Miss J Miss, Miss Joe? We needed a distraction. <sighs> I didn't expect a distraction that big. <laughs> well, this 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 will be good. Nobody nobody will notice when they get Mr. Richard out. <sighs> okay, well, oh, fingers God. crossed. <laughs> All right. Franny and uh, Cully, Cully will do his part. I don't know about Franny and Rutherford, but I know Cully will get him out. <sighs> yeah, Cully's the smart one, but, you know, yeah. Franny and Rutherford both are level-headed. So as a team... I think uh, we're in good shape. I just uh, didn't want anybody to get Cully. Now, there's no chance of you being caught, is there? I, no, I don't think anybody saw me. I was very sneaky. Okay, well, let's just let's just play it cool and uh, just, uh, you know, dispense chicken when the time comes. I'm ready. Okay. Um, Boone, at this point, you also realize that Cully and Rutherford and Franny are nowhere to be seen. I, I don't quite know what we were anticipating. We're anticipating them to. You wouldn't have seen him anyway. Yeah, because oh, oh, okay. we don't know where their car is. Oh, oh, I didn't realize. I thought y'all were all going in through the same entrance. No, okay. we were trying to go to a separate space so that we wouldn't Got be connected it. with each Got other. Got it. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. So I guess we're just trying to hopefully buy a nice chunk of time okay. in which Peace. they can get their rescue mission accomplished yeah so people are starting to stream out of the buildings it looks like possibly being you know evacuated out um at that point oh uh, joe do you want to use that there microphone to uh call the folks over for a snack oh that's a great idea okay yes this will be a good opportunity do you know how to run bellows equipment though i i've fried up a few things in my day um <laughs> i wish he had taught me how to use it. <laughs> but, uh, Nothing yeah, can go wrong firing up a gas system and fryers. It's going to be great. You, you okay. so, uh, yeah, it. We got some gas here. And uh, let me see it. Turn on. Uh, okay. Yep. Okay. Pilot light. I light the pilot light. And okay. Turn <laughs> turn the gas on slowly. Okay. Oh, okay. No. Okay. <laughs> That's 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 lit up a bit. I, I yep yep okay. So we got the uh, the grease is already in there. I don't oh capers. I don't know how long we have to heat the grease before it's hot enough to to cook the chicken. Now the chicken I was hiding behind the ice box over here, so I know that's where the chicken is. So the only hitch is I don't know how long the. We got to fire up the grease. It probably should have had that going <laughs> quite some time before we. Oh, wait. Will you do your wait, best? Wait. I'll start to make no, the Mr. announcements. Bello, can I roll to see if Mr. Bello actually did preheat the grease? He's a um, smart fella. He knows his chicken. 
Hang on. We're going to, we're going to get back to y'all and your grease dilemma in just a second. I want to get back to Bello and Stan and, um, and uh, the, the sirens are going off and people are now leaving the building. And, uh, what did you do when Stan asked for the hundred bucks? Uh, I, I, I agreed. And then I actually had a counter proposition for Stan. Which was? My counter proposition was to tell him that I, I, I think I've stumbled onto something very unique here, Stan. Uh, I have, and I'm proud to say this, have invented the greaseless chicken. Uh, and uh, I think it is something if you are, inter- if you are interested in, you could invest. Uh, we are certainly looking to expand our franchise and our family. Ooh. You may... You made a persuade roll on him earlier already, right? Oh, I did. Mm. It yeah. might turn out that there's actually no grease in the chicken. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know what arcane air air frying magic he uses. Um, and and uh, I, I, I really left you out to dry on that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you did. You you really Boone's, poor Boone's Boone. going to find out that the secret to greaseless chicken is that it's baked. <laughs> <laughs> Oil. all right so um uh stan looks at you and he opens his drawer as the alarms are going off he pulls out a hat from the drawer pushes it on his head grabs, what's that a pineapple, pineapple hat, hat. yes yeah. no and uh, grabs uh, a couple of cigars. He shoves one in his mouth and he, he holds one out for you. I take it. And he gives you a big hearty clap on the back. And he says, oh, Mr. Poole. He goes, I think that we might be able to arrive at some sort of agreement. I'm thinking, hmm. Wonderful enterprise like this might be valuable to your brand, and we could go in the neighborhood of thirty percent towards me. What do you think? Wow, that's that's a sizable amount there. You see, uh, I, I'm not opposed to it, but I think what we would do is uh, meet that should the business grow to accommodate. Uh, you know, if if it performs. These alarms uh, are uh, they're making my head hurt, and I think we got to get outside here. So um, uh, I think I'm going to be making my way outside right now. Yeah, I think that sounds well. Where's the where's the restroom? I need to hit the uh, hit the uh, little 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 cluckers room. Uh, well, I just want to clarify before I uh, make my recommendations to have. Bello Poule chicken across this base. Uh, the greaseless chicken. Is that what yes. you said? Greaseless, in fact. Greaseless chicken, which means mm. which means if you need to go back to work operating heavy machinery, uh, dutifully filling out your paperwork, uh, firing some firearms, uh, there'd be no concern that you'll be sullying any of the U.S. government's property. <laughs> then uh, I think I think 33% sounds about right. Mm, I do. 30, 33, that's a lot. Uh, I was thinking more on the 20% range, and we can bump it to 30 if in a year's time the base performs and we're making uh, 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 more money than we can grab with both our fists. Mello, I'm afraid you've been spending too much time with your chickens. I think 35% to have these thousands of customers at your disposal would be an oh. excellent decision for you to make right now. Yes, yeah, I think you said 30%, and I'll hold my hand out. <laughs> and, and he shakes it with, quickly with you. Yeah, all right, all right. That's Restrooms good. down the hall to the right. And uh, he pulls up his uh, he, he pulls up his pants a little bit, shimmies them to the side, bites on his cigar, and mumbles out the side. Uh, give my love to the missus, will you? Oh, same to you and the, and the, and the little, little eggs you got there yourself. And uh, he he moves his way, uh, turns turns a bit, and moves his way through the doorway. And uh, you see like a stream of people moving down the hall. Good, good, good. Well, I'll I'll pop into the restroom. I'll try and be a little. Uh, I'll try and stealth my way in. Okay. Um, and um, as he's doing that, 
Boone and Joe, uh, Boone, you're searching for um, to to figure out how to get everything uh, on kind of for the chicken cooking, and you hear a on the side of the chicken mobile on the back. And with that, we'll cut to a break. All right, everybody, take five ten minutes, and we will see you on the other side. And we're back from break, Michael. Get back to it. All right, so we left off, and Boone, uh, you and Joe heard a uh, on the back of the chicken mobile. And I'll holler out, uh, "The other side is open. Come around the other side." <laughs> okay. And there are two very serious-looking military police staring at you, saying, oh. "Hi, state gentlemen. Your, state your purpose." Uh, well, we're here with uh, Mr. Uh, Bello Poulet, the uh, finest purveyor of uh, chicken. Uh, you need to selling exit, chicken. You need to exit the premises immediately. Oh, okay. Well, can't we wait for Mr. Poulet? You to need up? to exit the premises no, well, immediately. Yeah, the thing is, he's in there, so he'll be coming out <laughs> shortly, I would think. Sir, you, you have you two choices. You may be taken and impounded. Your vehicle impounded, and you taken prisoner of the United States Army. Now that defies logic. On one hand, you want to keep us here. On the other hand, you want us to leave. Now, which is? I'm just trying to buy time. Which is it? Now you got me confused. I'm just a humble hobo. Do 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 do. Start doing this off to you, Dad. I'm a humble hobo. Excuse me, sir. Please don't arrest us. We're just waiting for our friend. It's his vehicle. We if we leave, it's like we're gonna be stealing it. You may wait outside the premises, but you must exit them immediately. This is your last chance, or I will be entering the oh. vehicle to take you. Okay, as no, prisoner. Uh, yeah, no, that's fine, sir. We'll just we'll just wait outside the fence. I didn't realize that was an option. Okay. If you can see you... Mr. Bello Poulet, can you tell him that we're waiting? That we didn't just leave with his his chicken mobile. Boone, can you drive? Uh, I can drive because I wasn't More. always a hobo, but I have okay. no idea how to put the side side of the thing. That, that's so fine. I'm going to be driving out with the thing. Uh, wide open. Uh, Joe, what did, you, what did you ask? Joe, trail. what did you ask the army man? Oh, if he if he could tell Mister Bello, you won't be able to miss him. He tends to talk about chicken. He just had a meeting with the food service people. We'll do our best, ma'am. Okay. Okay, I fire uh, her up. And... I, I, I was about to ask, did I leave the keys? Um, I don't make know. A, make a luck roll on that, Boone. Huh. Boone <laughs> make a luck roll to see if the wow. keys are there. Okay. Uh, 82, I don't think they are. <laughs> no, no. So, so oh, no. you go to the front and there are no keys in the chicken mobile. Okay, and they're still outside. They are. They are. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. The uh, the owner of this vehicle uh, apparently took the keys into his uh, meeting. Uh, may the young woman and I uh, walk out of the premises. It's the only choice we have. We're glad to do that. We would even mm -hmm. run if that would suit you better. <laughs> uh, we will escort you. Okay. So. Um, so they meet you on the outside of the chicken mobile and um, they start walking with you back to the front entrance, the gates that you came through. So that's our only choice. And Perfect. That's what we're okay. doing. This is wonderful. And not that I would be there to have asked this question, but did you by any chance think to turn off the oil? No. <laughs> <laughs> Can I roll a lock? Actually, Chris would have forgotten, but maybe... Boone would remember. Can I roll? Sure, luck? sure, that's fine. I'll I'll let you roll some luck oh, on that. Oh God! I think I just... Hey, uh, so I just looked it up. Oh, I made it. I made okay. a regular success. It, it wasn't until 1949 that cars started using keys. Chrysler. Really? Oh, well, there you go. Then, then Boone, you don't need any keys. You can uh, you can drive hmm. off in the chicken mobile as Bellows exiting the building. Thanks um, a lot, Rutherford. <laughs> to to see to see the wing, you'll see the mellow, you'll see the wing up 
as uh, <laughs> as it's going through the parking lot and military vehicles, which are streaming towards the fire, kind of like swerve around you uh, as you pull out of the parking lot. Is there any smoke um, coming out so from we, uh, the from the heated grease? Um, at this point, there is no. Oh, I remembered. I remembered to turn it. Oh, off. you did. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, um, but there's hot grease sloshing in the back yeah. of the chicken mill. Yeah, if I take too sharp of a turn. <laughs> yeah, and that's actually, actually I should, yeah, that's I should a real check thing. My drive my I, drive skin. I gotta say that that is that is a real thing that can happen. Oh, I, I can I can tell experience. you that from experience. Uh, I only have a twenty percent drive on. There's also flames kind of licking up above the buildings now from where the smoke Holy was. Shit. And um, there's Holy shit. Damn, quite Joe. a serious <laughs> fire going on. Um, so I, I didn't leave the building <laughs> yet for what it's worth. Oh, Oops, that's right. You're in the bathroom. I forgot. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, right. as, well, as we should fires... set up business outside. All of these people that are leaving must still want some food right uh, yeah and that microphone will certainly carry uh you know certainly reach them so that's a great idea so we'll drive through the fence and just park just outside uh, with Joe, the wing wanna... with the with the wing up do you actually drive through the fence because <laughs> i imagine it's for large uh, uh, fair. vehicles yeah. yeah that's probably fair Okay. So All right. Do you want to play out the chicken selling, or do you want to play out Bello in the bathroom? I think Bello in the bathroom probably. Okay. Great. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, can we just fast forward to the part where he's washing his hands? Well, I didn't have to actually lay an egg, uh, but oh, I'll, I'll, I'll okay. hide in the stall and put my feet up and uh, wait a few minutes. And do I hear any more commotion outside? No. Everybody's uh, v definitely exiting the building. Wonderful. So I'll take a peek. Do I see anybody in the hallway milling about? Uh, no, you don't. And I will stealthily make my way down that hallway. And uh, I first will... Uh, are, do you a, making, is, are you going back towards the offices or towards the cafeteria? Oh, the offices, of course. Oh, okay. And is there a, is there a, a list of, of who they are or, of, or like a most important office? <laughs> A most important office. <laughs> most senior officer on the premises. How's that? Mm. There's typically a gold star next to their name. Yeah, like is there a, is there the office at the end of the hall? Sort of prototypical trope. Sure, we'll go we'll go with an office at the end of the hall. I guess I should have said maybe. Isn't just that a Wes Craven movie? movie? Office at the end of the hall. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, well, okay. I I'll go to. Uh, uh stan stan stan's the guy's name right stan's office first yeah okay stan's office so i'll pop into his office okay and i want to look at his desk and look through his goods uh and i want to see if there's anything there that's personal or uh mementos uh or or something secret uh like in a locked cabinet there's a uh stack of um magazines of women posing in their underwear Okay. Uh, fascinating. <laughs> What's the name of the magazine? It's the uh, it's the Sears and Robot catalog, but there's no pages left except the underwear pages. Well, I see. I see. And and otherwise, Ugh. as I'm going through uh, his desk, I'll give a rapid tap tap along the sides, open them up. Is there any, anything in there? Any locked drawers? Make a spot hidden. Ooh, that is a, a hot success. Okay. And um, th so is your, there's no secret compartments. That's just not Stan's nature. Uh, there, there is a, a pistol. You recognize that Stan is not military. Um, th so, so that should probably be important there. Um, there's certainly, you find a phone number for uh, Wagoneer Farms, as well as uh, uh, a revolver um the the stack of magazines and uh let's say um oh that that would that would fit uh stan's id card is Perfect. uh yeah yeah honestly. yeah so i'll take i'll take the id card the, the revolver and i make a copy of the number actually is there a phone in the room yeah there is 
God, do I have enough time for this? I think I have enough time for this. I'll pick up the phone. I'll quickly dial the number. <clears throat> for Wagoneer Farms? Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> That's so brave of you to imagine you have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with this keeper. All right. Um, and somebody picks up and says, uh, uh, hello? Uh, yes, and it's, this is... It's, it's a child's voice. Uh, hi, yes, this is Stan from uh, uh, the uh, uh, Los Alamos base. I need to speak with your uh, parent immediately or supervisor. Oh, oh, yeah. Let me get dad. Hang on. <laughs> and uh, he, he, you hear him yell, dad, dad, dad. And, and uh, uh, it takes... Uh, you're, you're getting antsy because you're waiting for dad to uh, arrive. And fine, fine. You know what? If it's gonna, if, if I don't hear him come to the phone immediately, I'm just gonna ask the child to take a, a note. Okay. I'm gonna say, can you write? Can you write something down for me, Sonny? Uh, oh yeah, I've I've learned my letters. I can write really well. <laughs> this is so uh, be great. Say, this is great. Uh, say you're, uh, you're gonna have to spell it for us. I know. Stan called. <laughs> Uh, from oh, the base, Stan. Uh huh. S. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How about this? How about this? You. I need you to draw. Can you draw for me? Can you draw a cow <laughs> and draw an X through it and say, stay, just say the 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 military doesn't want your cows. And uh, you, you, can you say that back to me there, Sonny? You're gonna take Daddy's cows. <laughs> We're trying to save them so they don't they don't get killed. So you can you can have them out on the pasture. We just don't want them. We already got plenty of business. Uh, but they, but Mister but Mister Stan, Daddy was so excited about those. Cows. Well, I understand that, and that's going to be a, a a hard thing for you to tell him. But you're you're a brave boy, and uh, I have all the faith. You hear him start bawling, and he just starts. Ba- <laughs> oh I'm my not god! Get my bicycle now. And he said oh. I was going to get my bicycle. <laughs> yeah, and probably get my bicycle. <laughs> Probably there has to be a special place here. in hell. And then I'll, 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 I'll hang up. I'll hang special up. place in hell for all of your characters ever. <laughs> so I'll hang up and I'll, and I'll go into the hallway. Do I see anybody? Uh, n- no. Okay. And then I will, I, I will, I will make my way down uh, to the big office. Okay. And um, th- the. It it just says director on the door. It doesn't have a name or anything, and uh, that's it. And I'll give a quick knock. Do I hear anybody? Nope. I'll try the doorknob. And I'll open the door. Okay. And I'll look inside. All right. Big desk. Um, lots of file folders, uh, or not file folders, but, um, books on the shelf about food service industry, um, food safety, those kinds of things. And, um, uh, on the desk is another telephone and lots of papers kind of spread out everywhere. Um, from what you can tell, like, like service schedules, those kinds of things. And, um, you know, it's definitely kind of like the director of food operations for the yeah. entire facility. Okay. Uh, so actually I'll make a note of the, uh, the schedule of, of deliveries. Oh, okay. Sure. You know what I mean? Like um, uh, presuming the, yeah, that, that would... <laughs> yeah, there's, there's definitely a cork board with all kinds of stuff. So just make a, uh, make a spot hidden to make sure that you find that appropriate yep. schedule. Re- reg- there's regular a lot of success, things. regular success. Okay, yeah. So you you easily find the schedule for food deliveries, and it lays out like um, when the veggies truck veggie trucks come, when the refrigerated trucks arrive, and uh, the menus associated with those as well. Does it have? <laughs> I was going to ask about Willie's Farm. No, does it have the uh, like the laundry uh, services? Is there a is there a laundry cart? I'm thinking so we can get uniforms if we need them. Yeah, it doesn't have. Um, it just has like a, a day marked every week that says um, uniforms arrive okay. and and pick up. It says, okay. you know, uniforms arrive and pick up. Okay. And now quickly look through the desk. And uh, what are you looking for? 
Maybe we start I'm, there. I'm, I'm, yeah, that's fair. I'm looking for any folders that may have uh, just you know secret uh, written over the top of them, uh, and uh, 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 you know, or to the director, sort of. They look important. You know what I mean? Memos of oh. sorts. Okay, interesting. Let's see what we can find here, and um, yeah. All right. So the uh you're rifling kind of through the file folders in the desk um there, there's a lot of ledger statements um the, the billing that goes through there make an accounting roll let's see how astute you are on this an one. accounting you see, you see bruto is the account for the group. yeah I'm i not, know I'm not, I'm not accounting. Yeah, yeah no i do not that nope. okay yeah so uh you know there, there's a lot of ledger statements but nothing that strikes you as odd okay um that's all there's no other folders secret compartments nothing like that a rapid tap tap no a lot of the um a lot of the ledger statements are um uh, made out to um the the brady brothers fascinating well i'm gonna i'll take a couple sort of from the okay. middle so that they're not okay. uh, maybe um, easily detected. And I'll just grab a couple uh, so that I have sort of a section, uh, okay. roll them up, put them in my little pocket, uh, my chicken wing pocket, and I will uh, make my way to the door and I'll, okay. and I'll peek out. Anybody? Uh, nobody still. Uh, wow. In fact, the, the, that, that siren is still blaring. Yep. And you hear um, even through the walls, right? Uh, the director's office is kind of on the uh, rightmost corner of that building. And um, my, I guess at this point, uh, the, the, the shades would have been drawn a little bit, uh, but you hear quite the commotion outside. Like far away outside mm. or, like a, or immediately there by the door or the window. Uh, pretty close. Really? Yeah. Can I can I can I just take a peek? Sure. And I mean what you see is people running back and forth. You see uh vehicles moving back and forth, the fire trucks. Um there's obviously quite an intense incident happening uh not too far from you. Okay. Interesting. Uh okay, one last thing I'd like to do before I leave the premises. Uh, is there a notepad or a stick, like a sticky note equivalent sure. to the 1940s? Yeah. Sure. Uh, quickly want to jot down, uh, spoke with Willard Farms. They do not want to provide cattle. Uh, we're going with the Poulets. Stan. And I'll leave that on the director's desk. Okay. All right. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll head out. Amazingly, you did all that with the use of only one R. What? <laughs> that, How did I miss that like opportunity? Nudged, you nudged the receiver off the phone with your head. And... I, pecked, I, pecked, I pecked at the numbers. You know. I... Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's cut back to um, let's cut back to Boone and Joe. Or um, well, actually, we haven't seen Franny, Rutherford, and Cully and Richard. Are y'all okay if we go over to them yeah. for a minute? All right, let's head over to y'all then. Yeah, two two very distinct sets of stories happening here. There's there's one group who rescues a friend. There's another group who ruins a child's birthday and a building. Hey, that wasn't a group. Don't pin that on me. <laughs> Had to make sure that Cully would be safe. We needed a big distraction. Definitely. Oh, you made a big distraction. <laughs> well, it's not the distraction. It's the shattering the child's uh, dream. Of having a <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it, like Art said, if, if he's not throwing children off a cliff, he's mm -hmm. uh, shattering their hopes and dreams. Yep, exactly. Special place in hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So did we get back to the house by now? Uh, if y'all want to, we can we can cut to that. Sure, sure. it's uh, un uneventful, not a very long car ride. Um, uneventful. Um, Cully, you're really upset at this point, though, because Richard is definitely not himself. 
Yeah, like, so the whole time I'm trying to talk to him, I'm trying to, like, remind him of stuff. You know, you, the, you took the us more to the you show talk to him last the, night. The more agitated he gets. And at, at one point, uncharacteristically tells you, he just says, can, can, can you just shut up for a minute? <laughs> the look on Scott's face. <laughs> You're like the little kid with the bike. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the little kid without the bike. Oh right. <laughs> oh, <damn. Or> <laughs> uh so when he says that I I'm gonna be I'm sort of doing that thing where you lean forward and you put your face like between the seat, you know what I mean? So that I'm trying to like whisper mm-hmm. to Rutherford and I'm like, Rutherford, there's something really, really wrong with him. He just told me to shut up. He's never said a mean word to me in my life. Uh, and I was like, Franny, we need to get home right away. There's, there's, there's something terribly wrong with our, our friend. Uh, or we can go to the, the local hospital, but I, I think no, we should take him no. home first. I, I don't trust the, the, the hospital to do a, a, good, no job, a good job. Yeah, I, I agree with that, and I, I don't think that what's afflicting our, our friend Richard is going to be helped in a hospital. All right, and uh, and I also Rutherford, in his nervous way, um, looks around and looks behind and is checking to see if they're being t- trailed by anyone. Yeah, nobody's following you. Okay. Okay, good. And then I said to Franny, like, let's get him back and, and settled in. He he is incredibly a- agitated I-, I think he was i think he was put through the the ringer or something terrible that that eye is disturbing i i think he may have suffered some in, in the facility I-, I think you're right uh so when we get home um we'll want to uh, get him out of his filthy clothes get him cleaned up mm-hmm. yep. give i was give him some water uh i, I want to check to see if he has any sort of um uh, how his temperature is so you know just if there's a thermometer take his temperature check his oh, pulse his medicine remember he's on medicines right is he are there are there um prescriptions yeah, like in the heart, yeah, heart medicine yeah, yeah. Or something. okay yeah. okay and, and, um and so know. as you as you like kind of um change his clothes and stuff uh those things fall out of it not all of them not like the the brush and stuff or the pomade but the the pills do come out of his like the bottle of pills comes out of his pocket okay Uh-oh. richard do you, do you need to take some of these pills have, have you taken your pills today um i yeah i i i think i took a pill this i i took a pill this morning i definitely took a pill this morning okay that and you don't need to take any more right now uh, uh i no, no, I, I don't need to take any more right now. Um, okay. As you're as you're redressing him, Franny, you do notice that uh, he has a mark on his arm, uh, possibly where he had an IV, like or some sort of needle mm-hmm. um, near the vein. Mm-hmm. Uh, Richard, what what happened here? Um, it it hurts. I um, it's sore. It's sore. Do, do you remember how it got sore? Do you remember how this mark got here? Um, Rugged him. No, no, I, I, I'm really tired. I really want to go to bed. Okay, well, let, let's get you into bed. Uh, and I, I sort of lead him over and, you know, open up the covers for him, let, let him in. Um, okay. I just, so it, just I'm kind of curious. Um, if, a char- if a character wanted to try it, and it's not a, really an area that they're in, but how would a character try um, hypnotizing brain, someone? Brain, brain surgery? <laughs> or brain surgery, yeah. What if you wanted to hypnotize someone to try to get the, you know, maybe the truth out of them? I'm, uh, Rutherford's kind of intrigued by that whole area, and it's been, uh, at that time, it was a big thing. Okay, well... Um... There are blank spots for skills. Yeah. If you for talk basically to the like creating when you're setting. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So and if you want to kind of like retcon and redistribute some of your stat points, we won't do it mid game, but if you want to do that offline, okay. um, we could we could have you, especially if that's a subject area of interest. The other thing you can do is like dedicate time in we don't typically play like this, but you could tip it, you could dedicate in game time 
to studying hypnotism mm -hmm. and um and then kind of create a stat but we don't really or we can find a hypnotist or <laughs> find a do, hypnotist. do you have a pocket watch there you go just give it a shot what could possibly go wrong yeah uh, to. I do so want to gonna... ask him about the paintings as as he's getting in bed. I want to say, R oh, Richard, okay. can, can you tell me about the the drawings behind the paintings? Where did those uh, come from? I, you're making my brain hurt. Can you stop asking me? I just want to go to bed. Okay. I want to go to sleep. I'm you, really tired. You get some rest. We'll wake you up in in a little while after you've gotten some good rest. And as I'm yep. hearing all this and I'm seeing what's going on, I'm sort of as quietly as I can to Rutherford, but I don't know how actually quiet I'm being. I'm saying, they drugged him. I know they drugged him. Boone was telling us all about drugs yesterday and some of the drugs I've seen in the in the straits. I know that they drugged him, and that's why he can't remember anything. And I said, well, um, so Rutherford is actually a chemist, so he's got incredible uh, chemistry ability and would be would be aware of the effects of uh, chemicals on a body. And, and Kelly, that is absolutely true. If, if you looked at his arm, that they, they had an IV in him. And there are many, many components and chemicals that could be used in a person to make them forget everything from the pre previous day and put him into a state that he, he is in. This is not, not an uncommon thing. It's done in the military. I so, but why did they do it? Did, is it because of what he knew before they took him, or are they trying to make him forget what happened after they took him? I, I believe our friend uh, Richard was on to something, some con connection perhaps between that theater and the facility, or some other strange going ons in this town. But do someone, you think the magician him was involved? Do you think the magician did this to him? There's something connected with that the theater. They were too willing to lock, lock us inside when they were talking about these fictitious, fictitious dogs and kept us locked away when the army was outside. They complied too well. I think there's something curiously connected with the odd, the odd yeah, and that's happenings when they, at that place. Maybe they did the dog thing and they lied about him because that's how they got to take Richard. Maybe that never happened. Maybe that was all a, an excuse to keep us inside so that they could get him. But, but we did see him pushed into the car at the last minute. So that could be a connection there then that they do some nefarious things when these supposed dogs are out. I, I'm sensing a connection between all these strange goings on, the, the lights that happened, and some of the other oddities that we have seen in this, in this town. And you've been here a lot longer. I'm wondering if you've noticed things changing in the last in the last year since the facility has been in full op operation. Oh, things are always bad in the straits, but you know the dogs. They make us stay inside if they, there's the lights. Like it's yeah, everything's always strange. The army does everything; they take over everything. But but has there been more happenings and oddities? recently or has it always been this way since you were younger i mean i am only 15 <laughs> yeah. i don't know i don't know that i i i guess i could roll for it but i don't think he would think in those terms or notice things like that I, and by the way as y'all are talking right now you can hear the faint signs of the sirens from the base kind of off in the distance because they're pretty loud and mm -hmm. you hear them faintly um, if you were to look out at all from Richard's house, you would definitely see smoke going up in the air at this point. And Rutherford, I believe we have our distraction. <laughs> Rutherford, is there anything, you said you're a chemist, right? Is there any way for you to find out if they put drugs in his system? Is there anything you can do? A absolutely. Um, there's first thing, you, 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 there's a set, you can smell it sometimes. And so that's why we're going to ask. It just you. smells like pee. Well, <laughs> there are other times when chemicals are administered to, to people. They can they can produce an, a curious curious smell. Does he? Do you smell anything, my my friend? He just sniff them. We should go sniff them. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. And I was going to say we we could do that. Franny happens oh. to be uh, pretty darn good at chemistry herself. Oh, good. We're, Franny, working in a lab. 
Yeah, make a medicine roll, Rutherford. Oh, medicine? Well, no. That's, no. I have a one. <laughs> oh, then then make your chemistry roll. Sorry, whatever. Make your chemistry okay. roll. That's fine. Chemistry roll? Oh, my God. I got an 11, so that's a hard, extreme okay. success. All right. So when you, um, when you kind of like are, are looking for signs of poisoning or chemical introduction, all you notice is that he's extremely dehydrated. Um, and that, um, the, the smell of his breath, um, is, is common with most anesthesias. Um, and, and you're guessing that, well, not even guessing, uh, with, with that ba based on what you're observing that he was definitely kind of under some sort of anesthesia. Um, however, there, there's nothing to indicate any sort of long-term lasting effect of a drug or anything like that. The, the only other curiosity for his body um, would be the eye. Right. And so uh, I, I said, and, and that the, and, and looking at the eye, uh, you recognize that that's not a chemical that, that whatever happened to his eye is not done by a chemical. Well, I was going to say, I mean, with that 11, would you rec would you connect that the anesthesia plus the eye means that maybe they did something surgically to his eye? With an ice pick? Yeah. Uh, I, so actually, we're I all thinking Kelly. it. You had to say it. So I, I said, Kelly, go to go to um, <laughs> Richard's desk. I saw a, a magnifying glass on there. I, I bring it quickly. You have young, good eyes. I, I need you to take a very keen look at the corner of this eye to see if there was anything I'll, uh i'll run over and grab it and very carefully walk it back okay and i said color with your keenest vision see if you see anything any 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 anomalies in there or where something may be in, inserted well right, and he's Franny asleep at this point just are y'all waking him up no he's just mm -hmm. open his eye while he's sleeping yeah, I'm going to give the magnifying glass because I'm I'm sort of scared. I'm going to give it and say, Franny, Franny, Rutherford wants us to look at in the eye. I don't understand. Maybe you can help. I don't understand. But here's the magnifying glass. I, I saw the eye he was looking at, right? So I know which one to look yeah, at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a, yeah. So I'm just going to say very quietly, Richard, I've I, I got to open your eye for just a second. You just you just relax and, and stay calm. And I'm just going to lift up his eyelid and, and take a peek. Okay. And I'm going to sort of stand close by and I'm sort of ready so that if Richard like gets agitated or something and tries to like hit her or do something with his hands against her, then I'm just sort of going to not hard, but just gently yeah. sort of keep mm -hmm. him from doing it. So I'm just, this whole thing has me freaked out. I'm yeah, assuming he's, he's so exhausted that he's not yeah, really he's, pre yeah. he's pretty out. Um, you, you open it. it. It's a little weird. Uh, for you, Cully, because his eyes rolled back a bit, right? Uh, mm. Open the eye and you just see like white of the eye. Um, certainly near the corner of the eye, right? Lots of lots of redness and, uh, you know, you can see all the kind of veins on the surface of the eye. Um, really bloodshot. Uh, but no real like, I mean, there's nothing you can kind of point to other than that. Like no sign of um, an injury where something uh, like a needle would have gone in there or an incision, even a tiny incision right. or anything there, like that. The, the eyeball, the surface, like there's, it doesn't look like anything went into the eyeball. It just looks like it was rubbed up against the eyeball significantly. Mm, okay. Yeah. Any, mm. any marks of where something specific would have, uh, could have touched it, you know, either, either around the eye or on the eyeball? Like if there was some sort of thing that stuck over, clamped over his eye. No, that, okay. no, 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 no. Okay. Um, and and how's that... how's his pulse? There you go. Um, uh, and so, uh, Franny, as you check his pulse, um, it seems maybe just a touch slow, mm -hmm. um, but nothing really off there. Franny, you can make an intelligence roll on this if you. And is your sort of, like I'm assuming you're sort of telling, like sort of saying some stuff out loud, like, you know, did you see anything? You know, uh, yeah, I had already done that. He didn't want to. 
he didn't want to talk. And that was a success, Michael. Okay. Um, uh, and uh, so you've, you've heard about this procedure to calm uh, minds and you're, you're pretty, you, you've done some reading. It's a newer procedure, um, but you're pretty suspicious that uh, they did something um, th that they've probably done something to enter between the nasal cavity and the eyeball and uh, mess with Richard's brain. Yeah. They aerated his zone 73. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I've been hearing about yep, that. The, yeah, it's a new technique. Telltale bruising in uh, zone uh, 22A. Exactly. It's a, yep. it's a transorbital light scope. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. It actually brings light into the region. Yeah, they call it tolls for short. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because light disinfects everything. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but you got to get and it inside brings... the body first. Yes. yes. Oh, of course. Right. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I turned to Cully and uh, seeing this, I, I said, Cully, this is very important. You're young and can stay awake. Our friend is uh, going to be sleeping, but I, but I believe he's going to be dreaming. And uh, I believe he, in the past, when he was younger, he, he was known to, to talk in his sleep. I need you to stay here and take any notes and write out any soon words. as you say that i run over <clears throat> to my bag i take out my notebook i take out my stack of pencils i pull up a chair and a table right next to the bed and i'm like poised okay and, and so Cully, while, say, while you're here you also need to check his pulse every few minutes do you know how to check someone's pulse uh -uh. okay let, let me that. let me show you you take his arm right here, and you take these two fingers, and you put them right here, and you'll feel his pulse. Now, I, I want you to feel how rapid that is right now, and if it gets slower, I want you to wake him up. Um, I'm taking I'm taking notes, Franny. You, you've got to check his you've got to notes. check his pulse, Cully. You and you I have to. Know. Someone has to check his pulse, and if it gets too slow, we have to wake him. I'll... We'll, we'll we'll go in shifts, my friend, and and we'll we'll help you. And the uh, if you hear him start talking, um, and he starts to talk about anything, Cully, because he 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 trusts you and knows your voice. Ask him to ask him to tell more if he says something about something. Ask him what well, he's. Certainly, I want to find out everything. I'll I'll. I'll talk to him as much as it takes to get the whole story. And you're I don't know you're on the right calls, Franny. Oh, you can do it, Cully. I have mm. faith in you. I'll try. If I kill him, it's your fault. You won't kill him, but it, you, you certainly can't hurt him by checking his pulse. You can hurt him by not checking his pulse if his, if his heart rate gets too slow. And we don't know about it. I'll try. So I'm going to go over and take his pulse. Um, and we'll cut from that scene and uh, to Joe kind of looking out under the wing at this <laughs> this orange that's reflecting off of her face <laughs> and the side of the chicken. And really, like, a significant part of the building is now engulfed in flames and... It's requiring uh, large crews of uh, fire and military to try and bring it under control. I can see the orange light reflected in her eye. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel, Joe? I'm just curious. This is not what I planned. <laughs> I, I just hope awakened. nobody was hurt. I just... I just wanted to try. Well, you 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 succeeded. I mean, you didn't just try. You you succeeded. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm um so uh Boone, you're kind of nervously cooking chicken. Um I mean, you 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 your life has taught you to be really skeptical of being close to these situations. And uh, you're, you're now kind of in here and 
the tension of Joe staring out at that fire, it, it just reverberates towards you in terms of, um, you know, she caused kind of this catastrophic moment. Um, and you're just trying to like cook chicken, which you have no idea how to cook. And uh, oh, you, you're serving it to a few people who've wandered your way um, across the street. Um, but everybody, everybody's kind of standing in awe, right? This is the place they work at. This is the place they go to every day. And, um, the, there's this really incredible response, uh, to this blaze that threatens to consume, uh, significant parts of, uh, the, the research. I just facility. thought it would burn up the canvas and some people would like yell a little bit. And then there'd be a crowd. And then they'd put it out. And Cully could rescue Richard. That's all. It's okay, Joe. I think uh, it's a good distraction. Uh, I, I bet you they got him out. I hope so. I hope everybody's okay. Mm. I hope Bello's okay. What's the chance the fellow gets greaselessly fried? <laughs> <laughs> he should be back by now. Well, I think out of all of us, uh, Bellow's the one who can um, be counted on to take care of himself. He's got uh, he's got a way with. Uh... Wouldn't it be ironic if he was in his chicken suit and got roasted? <laughs> that would be funny, but he was not in his chicken suit. <laughs> he's yeah, kind of safe if he's not in his chicken suit. Maybe. Maybe. Well, I thought he was in his chicken suit. No, no. I said at the last episode, I changed into my overalls and oh, okay. preparation for this. Yeah. Now that Joe has realized that Bello hasn't come out, she's kind of worried. And it's going to start looking for a way to sneak back in. Ooh. All right. All right. Mm. So I think I that's mean, probably. I, I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? What do you want to say, Pule? <laughs> no, I was on my way back out, so I, I don't know if she would see me. Okay. Um, uh, this this who knows what could happen here. Joe, make Wonderful. a spot hidden. Make a spot hidden in the episode. I think that's a great idea. Oh, here comes the ninety nine. Yeah, that'll be wonderful. No, but it is a seventy nine, which is a miss. Oh, okay. Uh, so not too big. You're just kind of staring aimlessly out and uh you don't see you don't see bellow yet okay and uh i think we'll close with the uh the orange glow on the side of the chicken and joe's face and bellow spooning out uh or, or serving out chicken that he has no idea how to cook as uh the three of you and Cully is closely monitoring his good friend Richard and uh, almost feverishly taking Richard's pulse and hoping that um, he gets to hear something out of his good friend. And that is going to do it for us tonight. Until next time, you can check us out on underthelibrary.com on Instagram at under the library, Twitter under the LIB. And if you like what you're doing, what we're doing and would like to support the show, you can find us on patreon.com slash under the library. So until next time for me, for Michael, for Emily, Scott, Wayne, Rick, and Chris, thanks very much for joining us. And we will see you next time. Pineapple hat. Ha, <laughs>